Hey guys, welcome back. And so now we are jumping into Dark Knight's Death Metal, Doom Metal. Or you can call it just Dark Knight's Doom Metal. But in this case, Doom Metal is a five part series that takes place within Justice League. And this covers the group of heroes which Diana had split up, to whom in this case, they're tasked with taking down Perpetua's throne. And out of the five parts for this series, we're gonna put part one and two in one video because there's a lot going on and we gotta consolidate some of this. So let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week and don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so now in my attempt to keep this in the most simplest form of delivery as possible, I'm going to be keeping the death metal playlist down to two and one playlist will be our talks about the main event, but then the other will have everything else, which will then include all our talks from Doom Metal, the Batman Who Last Invasion slash Death Metal prequel, plus the Batman Who Last Becoming the Darkest Night, Trinity Crisis, and everything else. And that's the way I'm going to be doing it right now. But if you guys want to switch it up, just let me know. But in the case of like what we'd seen in Trinity Crisis, when Wonder Woman had split everyone up into different teams, her Batman and Superman went through Castle Bat to the Dark Multiverse, directly to the Three Crisis worlds. While Jon Stewart and the Lanterns, they made their way to the different antennas, which we'll talk about more with Multiverse's end. But in this case with Doom Metal, we follow Martian Manhunter, Kendra, and their team, who have been tasked with going straight for Perpetua's throne. And when we followed them, we first start off with Nightwing. And I gotta tell you, man, it feels good to say Nightwing and actually be talking about Nightwing. Like, you guys don't understand. Like, when I did that last video, I wish I could hug this guy. I'm just like, I'm glad he's back. But when we start off with Nightwing, he's thinking back to his days as Robin, which is good to see. I'm glad he remembers but in this moment when he thinks back he thinks back to this game that he used to play with bruce which is more like a stealth exercise more than anything but practically what he'd do is find a way to sneak up on bruce and try to catch him off guard which most of the time wouldn't work until dick started using some of bruce's tactics like using the shadows to his advantage but with thinking back one of the things that he specifically remembers it was the first time where he had actually did this undetected and he had followed bruce through a meeting with the justice league which for dick this was at a time before he had actually met the justice league and back then bruce would usually sneak off and have these secret meetings but then finding him here like for dick it was not only like wow batman's working with the justice league but then there was like this feeling of okay one day i'll be a part of the justice league as well but then of course like fast forwarding to now you kind of get this little like expectations versus reality kind of thing but these are just some of the thoughts going through dick's mind as he's traveling through this present death metal situation looking for a perpetuous throne and at this point he also has a horse named comet that was given to him by wonder woman which was forged in the fires of the mascara to which he also mentions is the fastest horse in any world but while he's making his way he runs into detective chimp who's in a bit of a pinch surrounded by a pack of like doomsday solomon grundy's but with them threatening detective chimp to take him back to the darkest night nightwing pulls up like leave him alone that's my friend and detective chimp is like i don't need the justice league and it's there where Nightwing is like, well, I'm not the Justice League. And then when one of them asks, like, well, who are you? And Detective Chimp lets him know, like, that's Nightwing. But when Detective Chimp tells him this, then the dude is like, which one? And when that happened, I was like, okay, here we go. I, I see what you're doing. <laughs> Cause like the whole Rick Grayson thing, like it ain't going nowhere no time soon. But then Nightwing also tells him in response, like, yeah, that hurt, but not as much as this is about to. And it's then when Kendra just comes crashing down, because once again, she's been with Nightwing this whole time. But obviously much higher above but nonetheless they're part of the same group martian manhunter on the other hand he's somewhere else and we'll definitely get to that in just a little bit but kendra and nightwing are able to take these dudes out and at least chase off the others but in the case of these guys if i'm not mistaken they're not like dark multiverse variants but if i remember correctly they're more like products of dr arkham or at least that version of dr arkham which we had seen from the death metal guidebook who had been working with the batman who laughs but after chasing off these guys it's here where nightwing and hawk girl feel in detective chimp and they let him know that they need his help to find perpetual's throne because he's been out here in this world longer than they have and for that reason he'll know how to navigate it much better not to mention if he helps them with this he'll also be helping them find the legion of doom who would like the batteries for Perpetua's throne, which in that case makes it a missing persons case. And of all things, it's the missing persons case part that gets Detective Chimp on board. But while they're here on their way with Detective Chimp telling them which direction to head, which is actually towards someone else he had seen lingering out here. But while he's telling them which way to go, Nightwing kind of vents for a little bit like, man, like the moment that he gets his memories back, it's like the whole world just falls apart. But also for him amongst the heroes who are free from New Apocalypse, like in his case, the reason why he volunteered, it was mainly because he wanted to get back to being Nightwing, which lately he's been comparing who he is now to who he was before. And Detective Chim was like, look, bruh, I ain't asked for your whole life story. I just asked why you riding a robot horse. <laughs> 
but it's here where they make it to their destination, which is the crash-landed site of the Hall of Justice, which here is the aftermath from the war between Doom and Justice. In Hawkgirl, she fills Nightwing in like the war was a huge thing, humanity sided with Doom, but essentially what we're doing here is giving humanity a second chance. But also while they're here, Detective Chimp, he asked them like, where's Martian Manhunter? And Kendra lets him know like from New Apocalypse, he had just took off and went his own way. But it's then when Nightwing is like, wait, didn't you say somebody else was lingering out here? And it's then when we find out that that lingering someone was Lex Luthor. And when they see him here, the first thing I'm thinking is like, oh man, he about to give them the soul stone. <laughs> but then aside from that, the next thing I'm thinking is like, okay, this is the first time that Kendra is seeing Lex since the war between Doom and Justice. And when she comes for him, like this is the definition of on site. But also keep in mind, it's not only because what he had did to Martian Manhunter, but also in the war between Doom and Justice, when the heroes failed, Kendra blamed herself for a lot of that. And most of that self blame had stemmed from her using too much of the power from the totality to face off with Apex Lex, instead of her feeding that energy to her allies to stop Perpetua. But Lex lets her know like Kendra, she can have her vengeance on him but if she does it's gonna come at a cost which is like a classic villain thing to say like oh you can kill me but if you do you won't get this vital information that you need but in this case i will say to lex's credit that the information that he offers it is pretty crucial and to summarize it like for the most part he starts telling them the story throughout justice league the justice doom war all the way through hell arisen and how his journey had stemmed from him believing that he was at the center of everything and it was because of that when perpetua took the legion of doom and placed them inside of her throne he had stuck with perpetua Perpetua because he had still wanted what was promised to him. But then as we know, that promise was taken from him by the Batman who laughs. But also because he knew that the throne was being powered by the Legion of Doom, who are all acting like the batteries inside the throne which were being charged from the antennas. But with Lex wanted to track down the throne, he had used the resources from the Hall of Justice, which had then allowed him to discover that the throne constantly moves as a way for Perpetua to avoid having it attacked. And currently at this time, the throne is in Brimstone Bay. And I'm gonna tell you right now, like the way this thing is guarded they're gonna need kratos to get through there <laughs> like the god of war himself because this thing it is guarded crazy but when he tells them this nightwing is like okay cool well we got that critical information that you was talking about that we needed so now we can just go to the throne and handle that ourselves but it's also here where lex lets them know that another hero attempted to do this or better yet he's attempting to do this and it's not going so well but then it's here where lex also asks kendra like because her wings are connected with the totality like doesn't she feel like what else has changed because back during Justice League No Justice, when we had got the introduction to the Omega Titans, we then eventually through the course of time, learned more of their purpose, but then also their connection to Kendra, the totality in the source wall. And it's here where Lex asks her, like, can't you feel what has changed? Like back when the Omega Titans were destroyed at the destruction of the source wall, because at the time it was in part their purpose to seal it and keep it from breaking. But fast forward to the destruction of the source wall in the war between Doom and Justice, like since then, Perpetua has resurrected them or better yet compiled piled their remains together to make one Frankenstein version of an Omega Titan to whom she calls the Omega Knight. And at this current time in Brimstone Bay, this is where Martian Manhunter is. And Lex lets them know, like even if they get past this thing, like this dude, he's not even the boss battle before you get to the throne. But it's what comes after him that's the real challenge. Because in addition to the Omega Knight, the Darkest Knight, he has sent Mindhunter to guard Perpetua's throne. And as they speak, like while they're here having this discussion, the Martian Manhunter is physically and mentally fighting for his life. But then it's here where we jump over to Cyborg and Starfire to where they try to boom their way over to the Hall of Justice. But one, it's portable, so they missed it. And two, the land has changed, so they missed it. So it causes them to land in the wastelands. And when they do, they're met by King Shark, Killer Croc, and Professor Pig, who all at this point look like they've crossed over with Secrets of the Ooze. But in their case, they've been experimented on by Dr. Arkham, which is why they're looking so crazy. But as soon as they arrive here, they're then met by everyone from the Hall of Justice, who had been making their way to Brimstone Bay, but also because Lex had detected their boom and brought the others here. And when they get there, they help Starfire and Cyborg take down the Bebop and rock steady versions of King Shark, Killer Croc, and Professor Pig, like that part gets handled pretty quickly. But even with doing so, Starfire is like, okay, wait a minute, like why are you guys just chilling with Lex Luthor? 
and Nightwing responds like, I really don't have a good answer for that. And of course Lex tries to plead his case like he knows this world better than anyone here and also that they need him to get to Brimstone Bay, but Cyborg and the others are just like, nah, we good. But then Lex kinda hits him with the like, is this how you gonna treat a teammate? And it's here where Kendra lets Lex know, like more or less, like the last time you had people that you called teammates, they ended up being the Legion of Rooms to go. And it's because of that she lets him know like, we're all with Nightwing on this one, like we don't need you. And because of that they all agree to take their chances and find Brimstone Bay without Lex. But speaking of Brimstone Bay, it's there where at this time the Martian Manhunter, he's physically fighting Mindhunter like right above the Omega Knight, but within his mind like Mindhunter is really calling him out. And Mindhunter tells him like I know why you came here alone. And he tells him like back when John had warned the League about the totality, he didn't tell him about the true terror that could follow until it was too late. And out of guilt, John had came here by himself because he had sensed in Mindhunter someone similar to himself and because of that he was curious to know what Mindhunter had seen in the totality from his perspective. But with doing this John had came alone because he had felt guilty, which obviously was a call against his better judgement. Because now with him having to go up against Mindhunter, who's a version of Bruce who had stole the DNA from Martian Manhunter in the Dark Multiverse he not only has a match like on the outside with all the powers of Superman plus invisibility and shapeshifting but within he has his greater strength telepathy but in addition to that he's also Batman and because of that you can then add the mental discipline of Bruce Wayne but it's also here where he tells John like what he wants from him because he knows John has a connection with the rest of the Justice League which we also know that John has and he's also trained himself to protect it but Mindhunter tells him that he will get through and he will use this link to find out what Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman are doing so that he can share that information with the Darkest Knight. And he more or less tells him that he will succeed at this because he's Batman. And I hate to say it, but he's got a point. <laughs> so sorry, John, it's not looking good. But while this is happening, Kendra, she can also sense John's pain. And though she doesn't know the full details of where he is now, she knows that they need to find him quickly. But that's gonna be a bit of a problem because they have to pass through the Valley of Starros just to get to him. But as they make their way through the valley, like everybody's kind of catching up. So you have like Starfire and Cyborg, they're talking about everything that had happened in the Ghost Sector. And Nightwing, he's telling Starfire about the Rick Grayson saga. And like, just recently we have finished like the whole story of Rick Grayson but it also has me thinking like we didn't finish the whole thing with Justice League Odyssey and I'll probably do like just a big spill to fill in everything there because aside from death metal and doom metal there's a lot of other stuff I want to dive deeper into but while they're having this talk and kind of catching up like for a moment Nightwing sees Starfire like in her old Teen Titans New 52 like hair and clothing and then he hears somebody call for him telling him to wake up and when this happens I'm just like oh snap we're in the valley of Starros like here we go <laughs> like it's trippy time but it's kind of crazy because for Nightwing he wakes up and it's Alfred there and of course when he sees Alfred it seems very real and he's just happy to see Alfred alive and then reality starts to flip and you start to see him in his new 52 uniform and then like his OG disco Nightwing uniform then his Robin and even as Batman which has happened a few times and as it turns out like everyone is going through a similar type of experience like this between Nightwing, Hawkgirl, Detective Chimp and even Starfire because there's a Batman from the Dark Multiverse who had been controlled by Starro and took over his world and the Starros within this valley they belong to him and they rest here just waiting for somebody to wander through so that they can become lunch and fortunately enough Lex Luthor followed them here so that they can avoid being eaten and in the case of Nightwing like he started to snap out of it when he noticed that these visions weren't real but the rest of the guys like they didn't so now Nightwing has to team up with Lex Luthor and figure out a way to pull all these guys back while also listening to Lex Luthor say I told you so the whole time all right so getting into doom metal part three like so far this team has been split up into two parts because in the case of martian manhunter we've previously seen why he had left the rest of the team which obviously was a bad call because had he stayed with them they probably wouldn't be in the situation of the valley of starros but since they are everyone with the exception of lex luther and nightwing like everyone else is still stuck within their illusions but on the outside they're being navigated under these Starro's mind control and with that they're either getting lured in to be eaten or influenced to attack Nightwing and Lex. But here's the thing, because in the case of Martian Manhunter with him going against Mindhunter, which at this point the fight is more so shifted to the background, with part 1 being the reveal of Mindhunter guarding Perpetua's throne, part 2 being like your first round between Mindhunter and Manhunter, but it's here in part 3 where Williamson kind of asks us the question, 
did Mindhunter get what he wanted from John, which essentially is like the secrets to the hero's plans, which in this case isn't so much a threat to the grand scope of Wonder Woman's plan, but instead is more so a factor of life and death to John's team who is out here making their way to the throne. Alright, so check this out, like the first thing I gotta say, like as we go into part 3, like one of the first things on my mind, and it was the same thing that was on my mind when we finished part 2, but like one of the first things I was thinking was like, okay, like this whole time in part 3, we're gonna be in the Valley of Staros, like the whole time and at the end everybody wakes up, well, gladly that's not the case. But as it turns out, like with Nightwing and Luther being the two who aren't under the influence of the Starros, like for starters we quickly get an explanation to why they're not. Because in the case of Nightwing, and we kind of touched on his reason in the last video, but like in his case when these Starros started showing him what they believed that he wanted to see, like when he rejected it then he started to snap out of it. But Nightwing also had an advantage in this instance because his memories though they're restored at this point, it's still early on and they're still in a state of fragmentation which could also lean into the extra partitions which we've seen in the Nightwing series, but while they're ducking and dodging everybody else, like Lex Luthor just throws out this idea. But in the case of Luthor, he mentions where years ago, he had experimented with Staros, and with doing so over the course of time, he had built a resistance. But it's also here where Lex realizes that these Staros are multiple sizes, which then lends to the possibility of some of them even being microscopic. And because of that, Lex gets an idea, he gets Nightwing's help to hotwire Cyborg, and with doing so, he gets Cyborg to kind of burn the rest of them out of the air because prior to that they had still been breathing a number of them in and when he does this like it works as far as getting everyone to come to their senses but then they have another problem when they realize that underneath the entire valley there is a much bigger Starro and it's like really and truly at this point like none of these guys are equipped to handle this and because of that they make the sensible decision and they run but then it's also here like in the middle of the chaos of trying to get out of there that like for a second they notice that detective chimp is missing and quickly nightwing finds him and he scoops him up and with doing so he also realizes that detective chimp hasn't fully snapped out of their influence because even now he's still having visions of nightmaster who we'd seen killed back in dark knight's metal but he's still dealing with the effects because he wasn't within the radius where lex had cyborg clear the air but as they're running away lex leads them to his ship which yet again is one of his many resources that he's accumulated during the time that he's been on earth since the darkest night or the batman who laughs had changed things up and eventually they get on the ship with him but for a little bit they're a bit hesitant about following lex but nightwing tells them like look we might as well because last time we tried it ourselves it didn't exactly play out too well but then it's also here where we get a bit of this conversation between detective chimp and cyborg and man it is heavy because starting with detective chimp he just starts off saying like he's done having friends everyone he knows has either been hurt or killed in some of the worst ways imaginable and that collectively they gotten so desperate that they teamed up with lex luther to save the legion of doom and because of that he feels like their days of being heroes is like they're done like this is it like we're not coming back from this one and cyborg tries to give him a bit of encouragement and he's like look we've made a number of comebacks but nothing stops the justice league but detective chimp then tells him something that's been reoccurring throughout doom metal and for the most part from nightwing but it's been said a lot because it's here where detective chimp he tells cyborg we're not the justice league we're the suicide squad and when he said that it kind of hit me because it it makes sense because out of all the different teams of heroes who have went their separate ways for their separate missions like collectively like each and every last one of these guys is a suicide squad because the missions that they all been going on throughout death metal like they've been missions like you're probably gonna die and i mean even still batman said don't die but even still at this point we all kind of know where this is heading but as they make their way starfire makes the point of okay we're not the justice league but even still we got to do everything we can to help the justice league and if that means a fight to the death then we'll just have to go down fighting <laughs> but then after that like when they ask lex like where we're heading to or like what's the next move but just because he has to at least subtly hit you with that i told you so in a like sly type of way he's like due to your reckless endeavors we're behind schedule and when he says that i'm just like look lex mother i ain't ask you all that like we just want to know what's up ahead like what are we getting into next but with doing this he also tells them about a few of the things that they'll run into on their way to brimstone bay but then he also lets them know like when they get there he's killing perpetua and like when lex says that like i get it like he wants his revenge back from hell arisen but then again at the same time i'm thinking like well how does that exactly work because i mean we know that perpetua is powered down and depending on how weak she is now she's likely an easier target with owl man and the lanterns cutting her off in multiverses in 
women but also and i could be just thinking too deep about this but here's the thing like just off of the fact that perpetua is connected to the multiverse which can be broken down and built up over and over again but ultimately if the multiverse dies perpetua dies which is why perpetua wanted the multiverse to live on forever in the first place but with that in mind it has me also thinking of the opposite like if perpetua is killed like actually killed like wouldn't that destroy the multiverse as well because it's very possible that that's a two-way street and i mean that still may very well be the solution it might be the way they usher in 5g who knows but when they make their way to Brimstone Bay, Kendra feels the urgency through John's connection that she needs to get to him quickly. But Lex is like, no, we need to handle this with stealth. Because really, if they get caught and even still have to go up against the Omega Titan or even Mindhunter, like this could cost them critical time and Perpetual's throne may move again. But of course, Kendra's not trying to hear that. She swings on Lex and she just takes off, making her way up to one of the hilltops to where she finds John, who's there alone and barely able to stand. And at this point, Lex and the others, they go their way towards the throne and detective chimp like he doesn't even leave the boat and he's like you know what mm, i think i'm gonna die in the car and like y'all go ahead i'm good like i just rather watch y'all walk into sudden death and surely enough like as soon as they go out there they are spotted by the omega knight and lex is like this is it we're donezo we're doomed but then also when this happens up on the hilltop with kendra she then realizes that she's not up there with john but instead she's up there with mindhunter who had posed as john to lure her out and as it turns out, prior to this point, he had succeeded at going through John and getting to her because the connection between John and Kendra was closer than anyone else's. But also when this happens, like going back to Lex and the others, like as they're standing right in front of the Omega Knight, like right in the nick of time, like while they're out there, right in the nick of time. And now I'm just playing. Nothing happens in the nick of time. Like they all get blasted. And Mindhunter tells Kendra, because you were first and foremost in John's thoughts, you have to watch everyone die. But so now, even with this happening, and it ends here, but even with this happening, I gotta say that I don't fully believe this because to me, I truly believe like from the moment that they arrived at Brimstone Bay and Kendra like felt John's connection like reaching out to her, that it was really like from this point forward, like everything that we had seen up to the Omega Knight, like everything from that point forward, it had been an illusion that was imposed by Mindhunter. And that's just my thoughts. Like we'll really find out in part four, but for right now, like that's what I think really happened and I'm, I'm sticking to it. And let me know what you guys think like down in the comments below all right so where we left off at part three it was really at this cliffhanger with kendra attempting to save john but as it turned out it was actually mindhunter but this then left everyone else to face the omega knight which is like your frankenstein's monster version of omega titans whose remains had been stitched together and revived by perpetua and at the very end of Justice League issue 55, like I remember when we had seen everyone get blasted, like we had this debate, like did it really happen? Did they die? Was this just a trick by Mindhunter so that he could taunt Kendra and get through John to get a link to the Justice League so he could kind of tap their plans and their next moves? But as it turns out, that shot, it had really happened because Detective Chimp, he had seen it from afar when he was still on the boat talking to Comet, which is Nightwing's horse that he was given by Wonder Woman. But even still, Detective Chimp, he did see the shot happen and we see that as he's talking to Comet telling him that he doesn't want to see any more of his friends die and even up close that appears to be the case with the exception of Nightwing who's blaming himself for volunteering to come out here and befriend Lex Luthor and more or less lead everyone to their death and because of that he just looks to the Omega Knight he's like go ahead take another shot get it over with but just before he's hit again by the Omega Knight he's grabbed by Detective Chimp who had figured out that Comet aside from being super fast it could also make itself and those within close proximity invisible which makes sense being that it was a gift from diana but to go a step further and i'm not a hundred percent sure on this but i believe this is the same comet from action comics that had like the abilities of flight and super speed but in this case given the armor from the invisible jet which one woman had tore down towards the beginning of death metal but even still with this being death metal there may be a wilder version of that narrative lurking somewhere between the pages like wonder woman tore out comet's brain and threw it in a jet who knows? So take with that what you will. 
but also at this time with Kendra fighting with Mindhunter within the mind of Martian Manhunter, he still hasn't been able to crack the mind of either of the two, and with doing so he admits that their minds are much tougher than the versions of them that he'd encountered on his world. But even with him saying this, it's funny how when he believes that Kendra's mind will be weaker than John's, he really stoops to like some petty tactics. Cause at one point he's like, you know, John's still in love with his wife that burned up on Mars. He don't love you for real. And it's a real petty move, but Kendra, she peeps what Mindhunter's trying to do. And at least at face value, we're trying to surface their individual insecurities. Because on Kendra's end, he brings up for her the fact that she been wanting to kill Lex Luthor since the war between Doom and Justice, but ultimately is Mindhunter taking small jabs back and forth between both Kendra and John in order to weaken the strongest link between the two of them which is the connection to their feelings for one another. So ideally Mindhunter's trying to expose their weaknesses to themselves to lower their confidence but all the while at the same time exposing those dark and secret thoughts and feelings to the person that they care about the most. And I'll admit it sounds like a very effective method like in thought or in theory because he even piles on top of it like the guilt that John is dealing with like with him coming here alone because he had blamed himself for allowing the totality to reach this far back towards the beginning of Justice League. But here's the thing, like if you're with somebody and here's some free relationship advice from Dope Spill because I haven't done this in a while and last time I told you guys to do those background checks and I hope you did. But here's the thing, because if you're with somebody who already knows everything about you and I mean everything, like you guys have shared everything, insecurities, all of that. Like if you've done that already, there is nothing that someone else can tell you that'll change the way that they see you or even vice versa. Because at the end of the day, they already know. If you're a jerk, she already know. You think about your ex all the time, she already know. You got her eating ramen noodles till Christmas cause you had to secure the PS5, man, she already know. And if those things didn't change her mind, the only thing that can, is new information. And because of that, before Kendra goes to strike Mindhunter again, John heats up her mace so that it's on fire. And brilliantly doing so because this Bruce Wayne had also taken on Martian physiology, which then makes him susceptible to Martian weaknesses. And this allows Kendra to deliver what appears to be the fatal blow. But even still, I can't help but think that there was a part of John that was like, if he shows her one more my thoughts, I will officially be the only person on Martian Mingle. So he had to think quick and you boy he came through. But also while this was happening the others had regrouped and Lex had came to the conclusion that the Omega Titan and Perpetua's throne they had similarities in the way that they were constructed with both having physical gaps which potentially could be weaknesses. And though initially the plan was for the heavy hitters to attack the Omega Titan in those weak spots and also while doing so distract the Titan and in the meantime the not so heavy hitters they would go for the weak points in Perpetua's throne to free the Legion of Doom. But while doing this this proved to be a bit more tougher for the BT team than they imagined. And at one point Lex was like you know what we may have to blow this thing up with them in it. But even with that being the case Lex let them know like we don't have enough power to do that. And immediately after that Detective Chimp he's like I got you covered. And he taunted the Omega Knight to blast directly at him which he knew would send a surplus of power heading straight towards Perpetua's throne. And this plan worked freeing the Legion of Doom. But also with much of the energy which had refracted off the strong points in the tower, they had bounced right back in like a ring effect causing significant damage to the Omega Knight but also separating everyone else in the blast radius. And when this happens like Nightwing Kid seen Detective Chimp's helmet and of course you know initially he's thinking the worst but at the same time if there ain't a body then it's like we know in the back of our minds that we were expecting this person to pop up at some point later on. But immediately after when Nightwing's attacked by the Legion of Doom this then had reminded him him of a question that he had asked Kendra back when he had initially told her that he would come along to find Perpetua's throne and free the Legion of Doom. But then also the thought of that conversation with Kendra, it also reminded Dick of the reason why he had chose to go with Kendra. And that reason is mainly because now he has seen the Justice League closer than he ever has before. And this is the thing that ties back into the initial flashback of his first year as Robin where he snuck under the Batmobile and he found where Batman was dipping off to every now and then unannounced. <laughs> Not sure if he thought he was going to find something else but who knows. <laughs> hey dude dresses up like a bat. But the thing that we find out here is like from this first time when Dick had seen the Justice League up close and even since then he's always thought of them as not just heroes but like the standard. And over the years he's always viewed them in a 
degree to that same perspective. But there was something about that moment on New Apocalypse, like right after all the heroes were freed, when Nightwing had seen through all the tough talk and all the optimistic looks and cheers, and he realized that the rest of these dudes are just as scared and confused as he is. And it was in that moment where he was like, yo, I'm not ready to deal with this realization. So when Kendra got her assignment, he's like, yo, I'm just gonna go with you. Like, I don't need to hear nothing else. And that's the reason why Dick joined with the team to destroy the tower. But then the question that he had asked Kendra when they were on their way that even triggered that flashback to begin with, that question was once we free the Legion of Doom, what are we gonna do with them? And even up to this point, I don't think he really got an answer. But fortunately enough, while he's being chased around by them, John then breaks it up. But then before they can really have a talk of reason, like Lex walks up. And for good reason, the Legion of Doom was like, Lex, you got us in this situation and you left us. Which he did. Hell arisen, link below. And in response, Lex is kind of like, you know, this time's gonna be different. Everyone sided with Doom, and I came to free you guys to show you that they chose right. But immediately after, like, the Legion of Doom, they're like, man, if you don't shut your... <laughs> Like, they ain't trying to hear that weak mess. Like, you think we're gonna listen to you after another one of your pep talks? Like, following Lex Luthor is what got us locked up in the first place. And for them, the last thing they're trying to do is all of that again. But before they get to tear Lex to pieces, Nightwing runs off with Lex, and the two of them then run into Detective Chimp. And this is that expected moment that I was talking about. But I like how Williamson handles it because it's not necessarily like, hey, everybody, I'm alive, group hug. But instead, it's like, y'all dummies is arguing, but we all finna get killed. Because while they're fighting each other with the Legion of Doom trying to kill Lex, the Omega Knight is just tiptoeing over with one arm about to blow them away like an orbital cannon. And when that happens, like, I really like that the focus wasn't really on Detective Chimp still being alive because we, we knew. But of course, with this happening, they do have to flip the script and bring this thing down. And that part, I must say, is kind of predictable because, like, what other choice do they have? But it's what happens after that really does it for me. But as far as their plan for taking out the Omega Titan, it's essentially a callback to shortly after Justice League No Justice. Because since the throne was made from Brainiac, and after No Justice, Lex Luthor had overseen the reconstruction of Brainiac, Lex was then kind of like, well, you know what? I know enough to kind of figure out something here. And because of that, what he ended up doing was hot wiring the base of Perpetua's throne, which was already designed to run off of the Legion of Doom, but instead he rigged it so that the power that they would generate, it could be channeled through Sinestro's ring and be just enough to destroy the weakened Omega Knight. And this was a pretty clutch idea from Lex, kudos. But the thing that did it for me is what happened immediately after. Because after taking down my Hunter and now the Omega Knight, Detective Chimp was kind of like, well, what do we do now? And Sinestro, Cheetah, and Grodd, they're just like, you know what, we kill Lex. I mean, it just, just felt like the natural next step. <laughs> And in my mind, I just hear them saying it like so nonchalant. <laughs> like in their mind, they just thought everybody else was going to be cool with it. Like, you know, we teaming up. I thought we was going to team up on that too. <laughs> like when we joined forces, I thought we was on the same page with everything. But of course, as we know, everybody ain't with that. But in this moment, Lex Luthor, he pretty much resorted to the Denzel training day method. <laughs> like y'all going to do this to me? <laughs> because as we know, like prior to this point, Lex had been pretty clear on what he wanted with him wanting to help destroy Perpetua's throne so that he could then get the chance to kill Perpetua and after that ultimately go back to the Lex Luthor he was at the height of power and prestige prior to siding with Perpetua. But it's here where Martian Manhunter approaches Lex and very similar like the conversation to where he did at the conclusion of Justice League No Justice when Lex had went from the good-ish guy to the bad guy again and it's here where John tells Lex like had you known then what you had known now would you have made that same decision? Would you have started the same path? because now you've kind of got that chance again. And aside from that, right now, the Justice League, they need all the help they can get. And so rather than choosing yourself, just continue to do the right thing. And really it's from here that leads right into Doom Metal Part 5, where Lex approaches the Justice League with his new plan, and with doing so, continuing to side with the heroes. But even still, we already know, if Lex gets the opportunity, he's gonna find a way to make Perpetua's defeat personal because he's Lex and he never lets anything go all the way. And so now real quick, I want to give a special shout out to all the Patreons. Thank you guys for all of your support and for anybody who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below to where you can head to patreon.com slash dopespill. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments because with each portion of death metal serving its purpose i feel like doom metal did more of a character update at this point in time more than anything 
because with Starfire and Cyborg, for them, it connected with the conclusion that we had seen in Justice League Odyssey, which I kind of shoehorned into another death metal video, with Darkseid wanting to reset the multiverse as well. But then we also got an update with Nightwing and how he's trying to move forward since he's gotten his memories back. But then finally, I feel like the last big thing that Doom Metal was going for, it's like it felt like it was showing us the true colors of Lex, possibly foreshadowing his true intentions moving forward. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And we'll do it again on the next one. Alright, later.